I'd like to thank everyone for coming to today's installment of the SharePoint for Business webcast series. I'm Brian Fettel, and I head up the mobile solutions practice at Ironworks Consulting. I've been with the company for over eight years now. We've partnered with Microsoft's digital marketing team to help talk about how SharePoint can be used as a mobile delivery platform. Today's webcast is, is Going Mobile with SharePoint, and we'll cover implementing mobile web, mobile web best practices using SharePoint 2010. So we'll talk about a variety of topics from the general, why would you want to consider a mobile presence, to more specific topics focus, focusing on implementation best practices on the SharePoint 2010 platform. Before we get to the presentation, I'd like to give you a little background about Ironworks. Uh, we were started in 2001 in Richmond, Virginia, and since then have expanded on the East Coast to have offices in Washington, D.C., Raleigh, Charlotte, and Atlanta. And recently we made a push out west with an opening of, a, of an office in Minneapolis. We're a project-based firm, so we focus on provi providing teams to deliver strategies and solutions for our clients. And those clients are in a variety of industries such as healthcare, government, not-for-profit, and financial services. Our firm does a variety of work, including custom web development, mobile development, along with, the core, along with our core practices, which are enterprise content management, portal integration, business intelligence, project management, management, management consulting, interactive user-centric design. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Chris Stewart for our presentation, Going Mobile with SharePoint. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Stewart, and I am a senior developer here at Ironworks. Um, I'm part of the SharePoint team, which in, in and of itself is part of the Microsoft practice, and uh, I'm a participant in the mobile strategy here at Ironworks. Um, if you want to contact me after after the webcast, uh, you can reach me at cstewart at ironworks.com, and I welcome any questions or anything uh, related to any of these topics. Um, so some of my background, uh, some of my SharePoint experience, uh, working with uh, 2007 and 2010 and, and both publicly accessible web portals, uh, web properties rather, and um, internal collaboration portals for uh, various companies. Um, from the mobile perspective, um, in 2008, I founded a website called uh, iPhone Dev SDK, and um, really what that was is a or is an um, an iPhone developer website where uh, they kind of come together as a community and talk about the SDK and building native applications and and really at that time you know there wasn't any of that going on and, and so I really had an opportunity to learn a lot about about uh, that community as it grew and and, and from the really from the ground floor. Uh, also during that time I had the opportunity to speak at uh, an iPhone developer conference more in the, air, the realm of uh, business development and some of the strategies around, you know, actually once you've built your application, you know, what do you do next? Um, more recently, I've done some Android development, and um, I've built four applications. Two of them are actually available in the marketplace today. Uh, and so I've, I've kind of gone from the full gamut of um, building applications on various platforms that, that have been available to me. So with that, Looking at our agenda for today, we're going to talk about um, why are we looking at mobile? What, what is it for for uh, for companies and businesses today that, that we need to to look at mobile? And we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, some of the, the mobile the factors that you can look towards for success um, in the mobile space, understanding what those are and how to achieve those. We'll then kind of move into uh, SharePoint 2010 overview as, as the platform in and of itself, and then from there move really to what SharePoint does from a mobile perspective out of the box and how you can kind of utilize that. Um, <clears throat> we'll then focus on a topic that we talk about a lot internally that's critical to every business looking at mobile, whether you look towards native applications or mobile websites. Um, we'll discuss some of the pros and cons on, on both sides there. Um, then kind of making the assumption that you're, you're looking towards mobile apps, or native apps, rather. Um, look towards some of the web services that SharePoint provides as a platform, how you can consume those on native applications to build um, an application that utilizes SharePoint for content store, for document management, and all the other features that SharePoint provides. So we'll talk there, really focusing on the native uh, side. And then moving more towards the mobile web, we'll then discuss information architecture, um, how you utilize that space on a mobile device to, to create a compelling experience for your users. Uh, we'll then look at context in terms of location and devices. Uh, finally, we'll wrap up with some search engine optimization related to mobile devices and mobile sites and some of the implementation considerations that 
that uh, you really do need to focus on in terms of uh, mobile device development. So first, we're going to talk to, um, you know, why are we interested in mobile? Um, you know, what's, what's important to note is, is understanding your audience and how your customers are changing, the, the demographics, and, and their use of technology is growing dramatically. Um, understanding who you're, who you're targeting and, and their utilization of uh, mobile technology is very important in your decision to go mobile or maybe to wait. Um, and, you, you know, if you're looking at the younger groups that are coming through, they're using technology more often, and more often than not, they're using it from a mobile context. Um, one of the interesting statistics that we found is that Gartner estimates that mobile devices will actually take over um, PCs in terms of web access by 2013, um, which in and of itself is, is very telling as to what mobile is doing. Um, and understanding your audience in terms of getting information at the, you know, at the point of service or at the point of contact uh, when they need it most. Um, you know, you can think of this uh, as an example if you go into a, a big box retailer looking for a specific item. You can um, go on your mobile phone, compare reviews, um, get information about the different items and compare them back and forth rather than having to do all of your information uh, research up front at home or relying on um, salespeople that, you know, and, and, and kind of their opinions there. You can really do a lot of that on your own while you're actually at the store, you know, at the point of contact where, you know, that, that's pretty compelling. Um, in terms of... Uh, Connectivity. I mean, connectivity is uh, an ever-expanding thing that, you know, we're seeing broadband becoming more prevalent across the country, and um, we're getting better access, not even just in broadband, but in terms of the cell networks as well through 3G and 4G coverages. Um, these, uh, the connectivity aspect is, is absolutely providing us a better opportunity to, uh, to get information to people when they want it and, and wherever they are as opposed to, relying on um, access from home, access from traditional means of gathering information. And kind of going with that, the, the technology in and of itself on the mobile devices is maturing. Um, even with the connectivity, you really need to have a browser, the, the rendering technology, the, the technology on the mobile device for native applications to actually take advantage of the, the connectivity that we're, we're experiencing now. Um, and so some of the more modern smartphones are actually, you know, bridging that gap to giving us, you know, websites and applications that are much more uh, immersive than we've, we've seen in, in previous years. So going towards some of the keys to, uh, to mobile success, it's, you know, going back to understanding your customer. I mean, are, are they typically folks that are going to utilize BlackBerry devices or, you know, maybe they're more inclined to utilize tablet machines or, Perhaps you're focusing on an area that uh, really is dominated by feature phones and maybe not so much smartphones. And so understanding who you're targeting um, it gives you an opportunity to understand the kinds of requirements and things you should be focusing on towards um, building mobile strategies and, and implementing those. Um, also taking advantage of the mobile context. Um, yeah, I recently went to a roadside service website from a mobile device. Uh, it's at a time of need. and Effectively, when I visited the site on my mobile phone, I found the full website um, instead of a tailored mobile experience. I was in need at the time, and so it, there's definitely a use case there that, that was, was missed in terms of if somebody's visiting this specific site from a mobile phone, that there's a pretty good chance that they're going to need assistance. Um, and so having the opportunity to actually take advantage of a mobile context and provide a solution that um, is focused towards that, uh, can absolutely uh, provide you with some success in terms of mobile strategy. Um, so knowing that people are mobile at the point of contact um, is, is a critical point. Understanding mobile information architecture is, is something that we talk about internally and in information architecture in general, not just in a mobile perspective, but utilizing device features, uh, screen sizes, real estates, and, and so forth to actually drive focus towards mobile content and towards the things that you would want in a mobile context for various use cases. So back to that example, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's very much, you know, you could take the context that I was in utilizing solid information architecture and effectively provide a good experience for that very specific use case that, that's really a mobile, you know, business use case. Um, another example I've seen recently is uh, actually Papa John's uh, .com website. Um, 
that's that I recently visited that website obviously to order a pizza and the the changes that they've made are it's very obvious that they spent a lot of time working on the information architecture and and delivering an experience that had all of the available features from the web but were very much tailored to you know the kinds of experiences and and, and user experience really that you would want on a phone um, and so that, that's actually a pretty pretty great example of uh, doing information information architecture correctly um, the last here we're going to look at is, is planning a mobile strategy and refining that strategy as you move forward with various site analytics. Um, <clears throat> so mobile strategy really is kind of an emerging thing that we're asked about here at Ironworks constantly. It's uh, something that's changing quickly. The market's changing quickly. So, you know, really what's most important in terms of a mobile strategy is understanding how you can actually change that and refine that strategy with you know, proven analytics that you're finding through uh, market research, but even within the applications that you're building yourself. Um, so really the key there is, is having a mobile strategy, but refining that strategy with analytics moving forward. So moving into uh, Microsoft SharePoint 2010, I really just wanted to give uh, an overview here of the platform, what the platform provides. Um, and we'll really focus today on some of the externally facing properties of SharePoint, more in the realm of site publishing, communities, and in some way we'll talk about the composites as well. Um, you know, specifically to sites, SharePoint 2010 uh, provides a really easy and, and powerful way to edit content in real time. Um, additionally, SharePoint 2010 provides a solid mobile experience out of the box. And uh, today we'll actually discuss how you can utilize this out of the box experience or perhaps adjust it to meet some of your needs. And, and finally, we really discuss how, how you can fully customize that mobile experience uh, while still utilizing some of the SharePoint 2010's web publishing experience to, to provide a, you know, a common look and feel and interface that Office users are going to be used to where they can take that, the, the ribbon UI and that publishing experience to the web and, and editing content that way. Um, so here, I really just wanted to give you an overview of what SharePoint provides as a platform. So more focus towards some of the SharePoint sites. Um, here we're really looking towards uh, some of the user experience side, uh, anywhere, anywhere access in terms of cross-browser support, um, really getting a lot of adoption that way through cross-browser, mobile interaction, and so on and so forth. Um, almost most important in, in this area, we're talking about a single platform. So whether we're building externally facing or internally facing sites or portals, whatever they may be, it's one single platform um, that we can utilize to, to essentially ex expand and, and customize to meet the needs that we're after. Um, as a platform, SharePoint uh, actually is built on Microsoft.net, and so that's going to provide developers with a familiar environment for building applications, and, and we'll absolutely explore that as we move forward today. So from a mobile experience as to what you're going to get out of SharePoint 2010, um, SharePoint actually provides a number of tools that can help you utilize its features from anywhere, and that goes towards, you know, viewing office documents, uh, the mobile search experience, SMS alerts for content changes, um, mobile my sites, the interface, the navigation, and so on. Um, while some of these things are actually internally focused, we'll really discuss some more of the externally available features as we move forward today. But really just here trying to give you an overall understanding of what SharePoint kind of gives you out of the box um, from an over, overall perspective and also mobily. Um, moving on, we look towards uh, screenshots that show on the left, uh, there's a screenshot of what SharePoint 2010 looks like out of the box from a desktop view. And to the right, you see that same view presented from a mobile pers perspective. There are actually two ways you can reach the mobile view. The first would be visiting the SharePoint site from a mobile device and being redirected there, utilizing the, the redirection system that's built into SharePoint. Uh, we'll talk more about that device detection and handles it, but for now, just know that SharePoint does provide a very robust way of handling mo mobile clients and redirecting them appropriately. Um, the second way, and, and less likely to kind of be used out in the wild, um, if you visit you can visit the mobile version of any SharePoint 2010 page by adding a mobile equals one to any URL that is available for mobile viewing. Um, but like I said, that's that's really if you want to see it kind of uh, testing and development, what traditionally will be done is 
you'll get that through the, re the redirection system. So as you would expect, really from a SharePoint site, clicking on the View All Site Content is actually going to present you with the available lists, library sites, and workspaces. Um, digging down into those, they're going to actually give you the mobile uh, access to any of the areas of the SharePoint implementation that you have. Um, so you have the ability to go through the hierarchy of sites and workspaces to interact with those as you would normally do on a desktop app. You can do those on the web, on the mobile web as well. Um, so really, here talking about all of the features that you're going to get out of the box with SharePoint, um, and we'll uh, show some screenshots here of what some of those look like um, from a mobile mobile perspective. So here you can see we're looking at navigating document libraries and line of business data, interacting with office content and people search, all of that out of the box. So moving more into some of the, the mobile web native, native app best practices that we're looking towards today, um, what we've done here is really um, trying to look towards, you know, are we building a native application or are we building a mobile website um, you know, for our customers. And this is something, I mean, we literally talk about this all the time here internally at Ironworks, trying to understand, you know, when do you, you know, push for one, one side or the other. Um, it really comes down to, you know, what are your customers looking for? If, if you're looking for an app for kind of an experience that's maybe you, you go there more consistently, you, you are kind of a frequent visitor. It's, you know, you can get more of a tailored experience in some ways with a native application. Um, but if, you're, if your users are expecting a similar look and feel or a similar feature set, you know, you may be able to eat more easily provide that through the web. Um, but really, in terms of content being delivered, um, you know, understanding the requirements and expectations for that mobile experience, um, it really kind of comes down to what the customer is looking for and what kind of information that you're pushing through. Is it uh, graphical information, 3D, 2D? Are you utilizing some of the advanced hardware that the machines, the, the actual mobile devices themselves have? Um, any different types of user input versus just keyboard uh, input for the touch experience? There's there's definitely something to that from a native um, native experience, but. You know, really understanding you know, usage analytics, the published statistics that come through in terms of, you know, how many folks are actually utilizing these devices that you would have to target in order to, to reach your customers um, versus kind of what you already do on the web with your desktop, you know, solution. So a lot of this goes back to really understanding what the customers are looking for and, and what you can provide given your current background in terms of, um, you know, web technolo technologies and infrastructure that you already have in place. Um, here we're just listing a few of uh, some of the pros really on each side of the house in terms of native and mobile. And <clears throat> here towards the native applications, it, it again goes back to the device extras and, you know, are you utilizing GPS technology, the accelerometer, the cameras, the gyroscopes, the, um, are you utilizing OpenGL, 2D, 3D, and, and things like that? Now, traditionally, you can kind of give a, maybe not a better, but maybe a more native experience uh, by building a native application to, you know, providing users that use Android, Android phones or Windows 7 phones um, an interface that they're already accustomed to using. And, you know, the different devices absolutely have their own look and feel and their own um, kind of set of usability standards that users of those operating systems come to expect and, and know. Uh, and a lot of it also is the excitement in the app marketplace right now. It's, it's, uh, it's something that's hard to ignore. I mean, there's a lot of hype around having your application in a mobile marketplace that people can, can easily get to and experience. So there's a lot of that as well. Um, we really look at it here internally and, and think in the long term, we're really looking towards the mobile web. Um, it really is a natural expansion from your core business. It, more often than not, you're already doing a lot of work on the web. You're already building websites. You're already uh, understanding how, in some ways, to deal with that, to deal with mobile devices in the context of the mobile web. Uh, and uh, having that single platform versus, you know, trying to deal with the, the intricacies of the BlackBerry and the Windows 7 iPhone and so forth, um, it, can, it's, it can be easier, quite frankly. I mean, we've looked in the past at having to worry about the differences between browsers and you almost see that to a larger extent today, or really do see it to a larger extent today, in terms of trying to build native applications uh, for you know the four major uh, smartphone smartphone platforms. 
you know, instead of learning uh, Java, .NET, Objective C, really to just touch across the four platforms, um, at least you know, in the mobile, the web side, you can utilize one set, one set of technologies and some of the industry standards in terms of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to kind of achieve the same goal. Um, Utilization of centralized uh, hardware resources is also a critical um, application towards the mobile web. Um, having the ability to update everyone at one time and, and not having uh, market approval wait times, whether it's rolling out original new versions, um, you know, version two, version three, or whether that's bug fixes, um, where in some of the other um, app marketplaces, there are wait times and, you know, really, having the ability to know that everyone's on the latest version is critical. I, uh, in some of my applications, I get support requests from people that are using an, an app version that's five and, you know, four and five versions old. And so for, for me, from a support perspective, it's very difficult to manage that having, you know, up to, you know, 10 or 12 different versions out in the wild that people could have and just never have upgraded. So there's, there's a lot to weigh, but, you know, internally here, we really look towards the mobile web moving forward. Um, to having the ability to utilize the, the information we already know and the skill sets that we already have, and we feel like a lot of our clients kind of are in that same position. Um, so really here we're going to look towards, you know, making the assumption that, well, we're going to go with a native, a native application for the mobile devices, and, you know, still we, we utilize, have SharePoint as a publishing platform, and we'd like to utilize that with the native apps. Well, SharePoint actually provides a, a full suite of web services from the platform side that you can utilize to build a native application or frankly a web application uh, with. So I'm going to show you a screenshot here of an app we built internally, but here I'm just kind of showcasing some of the some of the web services that we pulled out, but there really is a full set of kind of everything you would want to do within SharePoint um, is exposed as a web service that you can utilize and consume in, in any kind of application to to get the information you need or to submit the information you need to submit. So here's our, our few screenshots of an application we built for our internal portal we title iDubHub. And um, it gives you the opportunity to view the sites, uh, view the lists, view the content, do people search. Um, it really gives you a, a pretty rich experience for our internal um, portal offering that we have here, which is SharePoint 2010. So moving away from the native experience and more towards um, the, the mobile website, you know, the key, I mean, really one of the, the most important things we talk about here in IRWorks is the information architecture. Um, and again, that's it's really independent of uh, mobile web versus desktop web, but even more imperative in having opportunities for mobile websites that are traditionally lost in, in implementations. Um, so really just giving people uh, a really solid way to interact with your site in a mobile scenario. I mean, it's really that simple. So providing, I mean, first of all, providing people with a mobile optimized website, utilizing device detection and, and giving folks an opportunity to opt out of the mobile site and go towards the desktop site, um, not redirecting incoming users to the default mobile homepage when they're you know, specifically requesting a, a certain page in your site. Um, and really just making sure that your desktop site works on a mobile browser is, is pretty critical there as well. Um, second would really be understanding uh, your business mobile use cases. And, and we kind of go back to the, the roadside assistance site that I mentioned and the Papa John site that I mentioned. Um, you know, in the context of mobile, there were very specific things that I was trying to do. And, you know, uh, there's an opportunity there to really meet those needs. And, and in the Papa John's example, um, I mean, you really have a very solid user experience for the key mobile, or the key use case, rather, that you would need to go to Papa John's for in ordering a pizza. And so having all of that information there, uh, navigation was very easy to use. The, the user, just the experience of it, the, the clickable areas, large buttons, easy to read text, um, all the information that you need is really right there. You can get more information if you need, but all the non-pertinent information is kind of hidden and it's kind of put somewhere that's not obstructing what's really important. And so, you know, understanding that use case and being able to tailor the information and the experience for that use case makes a huge difference. And you can see that, you know, by visiting their site. Um, and finally, tailoring the layout and the content 
for the mobile device. So really keeping it simple, I mean, that's the best way to say that. Um, you know, trying to stay away from some complex content, you know, whether it's video or flash or anything that's a little heavier that maybe all the devices don't support, that takes longer to load, that is going to kind of interfere with the rendering process of the browser. Tr staying away from things like frames and just simply having a clean and, and nice and easy layout. Um, not necessarily staying away from table-based layouts, but utilizing those appropriately. Um, and, and not overdoing them to kind of create, um, you know, a very uh, just complex interface that's just unnecessary mobily. So here we have a, a good example of something we've done here at Ironworks for information architecture. For uh, On the left, you're going to see it, the full site map for an externally facing site that has really everything you need. Um, you know, all the information that you're going to have in a mobile context, but everything else as well you're going to see on the desktop side so you know even information all the way down to executive bios you know now on the right you may not need to see an executive bio if you're going to go visit the specific website on your mobile device um, there are specific use cases if you're going to uh, visit, visit the bge website um, in terms of maybe you need to report a problem or uh, you need to visit and it kind of work with some of the, the aspects of your account contact them for support um, reporting an outage. I mean, things like that, that you would actually want to go to the site on your mobile phone and, and kind of understanding what those business use cases are from a mobile context and being able to tailor the experience specifically to, uh, to that. And so here, really what we're talking about is on the left, we have the full SharePoint experience. Um, and on the right, we have, you know, really in the context of SharePoint, a SharePoint site that's customized you know, just to provide the experience that we want uh, from a mobile perspective. And we'll talk more about the technical details of that as we move forward. So moving towards some of the context um, aspects, or specifically location, uh, really what we want to talk about here is that HTML5 is, is, as these web technologies progress, we're getting some of the features that, you know, as little as a year ago, we really needed to use a native application for in terms of geolocation and getting a customer's location in real time. Um, today, with HTML5 and some of the, the modern you know, smartphones, their browsers are quickly adopting this, so this is already available. You can actually get a customer's uh, you know, latitude, longitude through JavaScript. Um, so really, it it's kind of goes back to providing a, a positive experience for you, your users by understanding their location. Um, and really what I wanted to, to hit home with here is in terms of building web parts um, that are kind of location aware. So, you know, like we said earlier, SharePoint is a platform built on Microsoft.net. What it's utilizing really are, you know, open standards in terms of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So as you're building web parts, really you're just building, you know, those, those, uh, those standard, you know, web technologies. So you can embed JavaScript that is HTML5, that's location aware, to build web parts that really provide your users a very tailored experience because you understand where they are. And with the nature of web parts being um, solutions that you can take from implementation to implementation, um, you can build one web part that's location aware and take that from one implementation to the next. So really that's what I want to focus on here, and, and that's pr a pretty powerful thing in terms of location um, with HTML5. <coughs> So for device context, you know, SharePoint actually provides uh, some pretty excellent user, user detection, user agent detection out of the box. So what SharePoint will actually do when you go to SharePoint from a mobile device is, is sniff out the user agent and understand what kind of device it is. And it even gets to the point where it understands the different uh, capabilities that that device has. And as you look at the screenshot, you can see that during the uh, detection process, it's going to tell SharePoint, hey, this device has the touch screen. This device, um, you know, can, can initiate voice calls. It, it is a mobile device. So it, you're kind of telling SharePoint, what are some of the capabilities that this phone has? And so SharePoint will actually tailor its experience to, um, to what these capabilities are. As an example, if you view a SharePoint homepage on a phone that's, you know, five or six years old, that maybe it doesn't have a touch screen, and maybe it doesn't have some of the more modern capabilities of the phones today, um, SharePoint knows that. And so SharePoint on a list will actually show one, two, three, four, five down the side of the list corresponding to the keys on your, 
on your keypad. So knowing that you can't just reach out and touch the link on that screen because it's not a touch screen, you can just utilize the keypad for navigation. Um, if you visit the, the SharePoint site on a Windows Phone 7 or an Android or any of the others, the more modern phones that do support touch screens, it knows that and it won't show the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can just touch the link that you want to go to. So it's, it's pretty powerful that SharePoint has the ability to, to kind of tailor its experience based on the different types of phones and its capabilities that are, that are viewing it. Um, this file that I'm showing a snippet of here is actually the compat.browsers compat file. Um, it's on the file system, and really any administrator can go in and modify, modify that file if you'd like to handle a specific phone differently than others or even add uh, to the user agent detection for new phones or just simply make modifications to existing. So the default uh, SharePoint mobile experience has a, a limited set of mobile use cases. Um, you know, with out-of-the-box user agent detection, the pages that you're being sent to are static pages that live on the file system. Those, those pages don't utilize a master page. Um, and really, there, it can be problematic to edit those pages directly on a file system when you go through different site collections or, um, you know, upgrade cycles. And, and you really kind of want to stay away from that. And so ideally, what we like to do is take, um, to create a literal SharePoint site in the context of SharePoint, a site. And with that, we have, you know, the JavaScript and the CSS and the style sheets and the master page and things that we can customize you know, in terms of a mobile context. So if you're going to actually view that page, it's completely customized and tailored for a mobile device. We can customize all the HTML, the JavaScript, the sizes of all these things to, to really be trimmed down and, and easy to consume on a mobile device. And so that's generally how we, we like to approach that. And with that, of course, you're going to lose some of that, or you will lose the uh, user agent detection. And so to combat that, you, you can really go about that a number of ways. The two that we kind of enjoy are utilizing JavaScript for that device detection. Um, you can simply use some of the user agents that you found in the, the, the compatibility file that we just looked at to kind of sniff out the user agent and the various phones that are going to be visiting the site and redirect them uh, to your literal SharePoint site. Uh, that's mobily focused. Uh, so you can do that, and you can also certainly create custom controls that do the same thing. Uh, the JavaScript side is nice and easy to do, and um, plenty, of, plenty of examples out there on how to detect mobile devices through JavaScript for uh, customized experiences. Another a real key aspect that we look at towards uh, the device context um, you know, it's really giving people an opportunity to opt out of the mobile experience and visit the full site. You know, we have websites today that are mobily focused, but they were built six and seven years ago, and maybe we didn't have um, as strong of rendering capabilities on the mobile mobile phones and the browser. So um, a lot of these pages, they don't really give you enough. You know, they don't give you maybe everything that you want, and so sometimes you're going to actually go to and view or want to view the desktop site. So having the opportunity to actually do that is critical. I mean, it's shocking how many sites don't give you that opportunity, um, but it's something we absolutely focus on here. So giving people the opportunity to view the desktop site is, is a critical thing. Search engine optimization is uh, something that's we actually look at, you know, we certainly look at that for your desktop web and mobile. And it's interesting how often the, the mobile side of that is forgotten. Uh, we focus so much on this new and emerging technology that we lose sight that, yeah, I mean, this absolutely still needs to be um, uh, uh, seen by search engines and still needs to be crawled and the content still needs to be accessible for them. So, you know, whether... Um, whether you're, the search engines are finding your normal site for the normal view or the mobile view, it should still be very easy to find the content that they're after that they need to index and to, to share your site in, uh, in the search engines. Um, that really, the, the, the takeaway there is that the, all the same rules apply. I mean, it's not that the mobile side at this point is any you know, different in terms of how you would structure information or you know, the utilization of different keywords and um, just simply well-formed, appropriate use of markup and giving... Uh, search engine crawlers and an easy view at your content and the structure of your content. 
Um, so from the SharePoint side, you can actually utilize SharePoint tagging to create a network of keywords. Um, so with all of the, the, the managed metadata and so forth and the tagging structure that's available in, content, in SharePoint, um, you can utilize those to kind of create that network of keywords. And, and search engine op, or search engine crawlers are actually going to take advantage of that and utilize those when, when crawling your content to make, you know, the, the correct um, the correct matchups there for search results. And another aspect that we look at in terms of SEO with mobile specifically is that um, the idea of mobile search is kind of a new and emerging idea. And they're not search engines aren't necessarily doing this yet, but we feel like in, in time, um, Google knows you're on a mobile device when you do a search on, on, on your phone. So, you know, we think having a, having your site ready for, for mobile um, as a platform is going to give you a better chance that as, you know, Google is starting to put some weight on results that have solid mobile experiences, you know, being ready for that is, is a very critical thing. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out moving forward, but that's something that we think about here in terms of, um, you know, mobile search on mobile devices. Final topic really is in terms of the uh, implementation considerations. Um, one key area is, is keeping track of the payload sizes of the mobile pages. Um, so even though we have, we're getting 3G and 4G, not everyone really has access to that. So, you know, we need to utilize the, the custom master pages and the market that we're building in terms of creating a very tailored, a customized experience visually to create a really compact experience as well. So the, the physical size of the pages that you're downloading and are being transferred across the wire should be kept in mind. Um, you should really think about that. Um, also, in terms of the images or any other types of media, video, um, really thinking through those as you're putting those on mobile pages and, and taking those into consideration in terms of how large they should be, if you should use them at all, and, and really understanding that and understanding your customers and the, the kinds of access that they have is, is going to give you a pretty positive, uh, give them a positive experience and in turn, you know, make your site look good. Um, <clears throat> With so many different uh, mobile devices available, and really we're talking both native and mobile web, um, understanding version support is, is something that you should really be aware of, um, especially the native applications. The, the difference between one version um, from an Android or a BlackBerry or an iPhone or Windows Phone 7, uh, the differences between those versions can be dramatic. And we've seen that here internally in some of the apps that we've built where quite literally from one version to the next, you're getting something as critical as uh, internal database access. And, and so understanding what those differences are um, is going to help you with a, a lot less frustration moving forward. And in terms of uh, mobile web applications, while this is becoming less of a problem as some of them adopt the same rendering engines uh, like WebKit, um, it's still something that you need to you know, be con con considerate of in terms of how is my site going to render on an iPhone versus a Windows Phone 7 and, and kind of keeping those uh, constraints in mind as you build your mobile web apps. In terms of implementation considerations, really the, the most important thing is understanding overall system performance and how that impacts your customers with the ability to actually interact with your mobile experience. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty common thing that people are not going to wait, you know, five and six and, and ten seconds to visit a site, whether it's desktop or mobile. Um, and so having a, a responsive site, I mean, it, it can make or break what you're trying to do. So um, SharePoint actually provides you with a, a pretty wide range of caching strategies, um, different ways to cache data. And, uh, you know, we've utilized that internally on pretty much every project that I've been a part of. Um, a key example we had about a year ago is that we had a very large uh, internal portal that was visited by, you know, 30-ish thousand people every morning. That, uh, that home page actually had some rich content on it. This is a desktop web, uh, but really the same ideas apply. The, on the front of that page, we had some heavy Silverlight work that was going on and tons of, you know, content query, um, web parts and search, even search parts as well on the home page of the site. Well, 9 a.m., 30-some thousand people hit that site, and it just, it's going to crawl. It doesn't matter what you're using, you know, that's going to happen. So, 
even just caching that data for 30 seconds or two minutes, I mean, something what we think of as trivial in terms of caching can very much uh, alleviate load on the servers that you have. So utilizing caching um, is, is one way, especially with SharePoint, that you can lessen the burden of your servers. Um, even if it's just simply 30 seconds, it makes a huge difference. Um, another key advantage that you can take, uh, take advantage of, really, in terms of the mobile side, is utilizing gzip compression. So uh, the, mobile, the modern mobile phones, the, the Blackberries of the world and so forth, they, the browsers that they use actually support gzip compression. Um, so you can I have a screenshot here with IIS where you can actually enable both static and dynamic compression um, so you can take advantage of that. So the, the physical information that's being tossed across the wire is far smaller than it actually is when it's being rendered. So, you know, these are two really simple things that you can do um, that will make a dramatic impact um, on the performance of your site and at the end of the day on the perception that your site provides your customers. <clears throat> All right, and so with that, we're going to have uh, Q&A go through the, the live meeting here. Um, but I, I did want to mention the, the two blogs that we have here at Ironworks um, are Fit and Finish, which is our user experience group. Um, they have a blog where they talk about a lot of the information architecture, some of the really interesting things that they're doing. And within the technology group, uh, we have Under the Hood, where we talk uh, a lot about some of the, the more technical, detailed you know, developer questions and, and things that we discover there. So please feel free to visit those. And if you have any questions or, or feedback or anything you'd like to send me after, my email is cstewart at ironworks.com, and I welcome any questions. Thanks, Chris. Um, let's go through some of the questions, um, and, and while we're doing that, you can feel free to submit some more. If you haven't submitted one yet, all you have to do is click on the Q&A menu item at the top of your live meeting window and send it on to us. So just getting to the ones that, that have been submitted already. Uh, first one is, why create a SharePoint site and customize that versus customizing the, the out-of-the-box mobile pages? Okay, so, you know, really there, it kind of goes back to, um, you're having the ability to customize stuff and that's not going to get lost uh, between you know, different site collections or won't get lost through um, upgrade cycles. You're not touching physical files that live on the file system that you know, are kind of integral to SharePoint. So um, doing this gives you a master page, gives you access to you know, CSS, JavaScript, and so forth that you can really create a fully customized uh, user experience that's very much tailored to mobile devices and still stays within the, sh the context of a SharePoint site, giving you the ribbon, giving you the, the publishing capabilities that, that exist within SharePoint. Great, thanks. Um, let's see, the next one that was submitted is, um, what are you designing for? Is it smartphones, uh, different devices, OS versions? And yeah, I, I guess that, that, that question leads a little bit to interpretation, but. Uh. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see, I mean, really, it's, it's uh, internally here, we're doing all of the above. Uh, I mean, we have projects going on where we're, we're dealing with the four main, you know, development platforms for native applications, but, you know, Every customer we talk to wants to talk about mobile strategy. They want to understand, you know, in the next five years, ten years, you know, how can we be ready for mobile, you know, the mobile revolution that's happening. So, you know, quite frankly, we're all over the board. Uh, we, we're dealing with, uh, like I said, the native apps, absolutely, the, the mobile web side of things. Um, we're trying to stay towards some of the newer versions of the operating systems. Um, some of the older, as we kind of alluded to during the talk, uh, they don't support some of the basic things you might need. So, you know, really, as as you make the distinction, uh, we're going to focus on BlackBerry and this and that. Um, understand the different versions within BlackBerry, especially as it has a, a much longer uh, history as the others. You know, understand the, what you're going to get with each version and and uh, do that research up front for sure. Great. And it looks like we have one more, so if, if anyone has any, any last minute questions they want again, please submit them now. But um, the, the last question that we have right now is, what design concepts are most relevant to the SharePoint um, mobile and SharePoint mobile experience? Yeah, I mean, you know, it really fits with everything that you do with regular SharePoint. I mean, 
at the end of the day, you're utilizing SharePoint Designer. You're still utilizing Visual Studio. You're still utilizing the same tools to work with SharePoint that you do on the desktop side. So really, the only real difference comes down to um, the fact that this one is tailored to, uh, you know, 1600 by 1200 resolution. This one is tailored to, you know, 320 by 40 or whatever, 320 by 240 or whatever the resolution may be on the phone. So from a design perspective, I mean, you're quite literally doing the same thing. So it's really not a huge transition to, to kind of go from one towards the other, honestly. Right. Well, that's great. That was our last question. So that about wraps it up. Uh, we'll make the, uh, the presentation available as a link from ironworks.com by sometime tomorrow. And, uh, and thanks, Chris, for, for putting together the presentation. Uh, it's definitely informative for, for the folks here and uh, hopefully for the, uh, for the audience in general. Um, thank you so much for attending today's webcast, and make sure to register for the next webcast, which is entitled SharePoint as a BI Platform, and it's currently scheduled for January 11th. Uh, and to register for that, just go to ironworks.com and click on the link for the SharePoint for Business web webcast series under the news and events on the home page. And, uh, and you'll find a link to register there. And also, um, that's where we'll be posting links to all of the, uh, the materials for this particular webcast as well. So thanks again.